The purpose of a pre-trip is to make sure that the school bus is safe for kids to ride on. I have chalked the wheel and I've also secured my key. First things first, check under the bus to make sure there's no leaks and make sure there's nothing hanging down like hoses or wires. We'll check the front of the bus and make sure that all the lenses are not cracked or damaged. We'll check the school bus reflector and make sure that it's intact and in good shape. Also the windshield to make sure that it is not cracked or damaged and we can see through it visibly. We'll walk around the side of the bus and we'll pull on the mirror mount and we will also check our flat or side mirror and our convex mirror to make sure there are no cracks or damages. We will also unhook our hood latch. We'll walk over to this mirror mount. This is our crossover mirror. Want to make sure it's not cracked or damaged. Make sure the mirror mount is tight. We'll also we'll check our crossing arm to make sure it extends properly and that it secures back to the bus. Also, we'll check our boot to make sure that there is no cracks or damages in that. We'll pull on this mirror mount, make sure it is tight. We'll also we'll check in this crossover mirror to make sure there's no cracks or damages there. We'll also pull this hood latch to make sure it is unsecured. And then we'll pull on this mirror mount and our side or flat mirror and our convex mirror. We'll check those for cracks or damages. Now we'll raise the hood. And we'll start high and work our way low. Our windshield wiper, we will check the arm to make sure it's intact and the blade that it's flush against the glass. We want to check our wiring to make sure that there's no frays or fire damage. We'll do an overview of our engine and we're checking for our clamps and also our hoses to make sure there's no leaks. We'll check our fluids. We have our transmission fluid. We check that when the engine is hot and running. Our oil when the engine is cold and not running. Also our coolant and our power steering fluid. We'll check both of those for appropriate level. We'll also check our serpentine belt. You can pull on it. You want to make sure that there's no more than three quarter inch slack in the belt. We'll start now with our steering section. There are three parts to that. We've got our steering linkage. You can check that on either end to make sure that it's intact and in good shape. Also have our steering box. We want to make sure that it is intact and that it's not leaking. We also have our power steering hoses. We want to make sure we check the clamps on those and check for leaking. That's the three parts of the steering section. We also have our suspension. There's an acronym for that. It's SUMS, S-U-M-S. The S stands for spring. We want to check to make sure there are no cracks in the spring. Also our U-bolts, that's the U in SUMS. Make sure that is tight. It's holding the spring together. The M in SUMS is our mounts. You can see it on either side. The mounts need to be tight as well because they are holding the spring in place on either end. And then lastly, the S in sums is for our shocks. Make sure they're attached top and also bottom. That's the four parts to our suspension system. And then we have our brake system. There are five parts to this. We'll start with our brake chamber. Make sure that's not cracked or damaged. Our brake line, want to make sure it has no leaks. We're going to check our push rod, which is a U-shaped piece of metal that you see right here. Make sure it's attached to the slack adjuster. The slack adjuster can have no more than one inch of slack in it. And then we also have right here our brake drum lining. Want to make sure that the brake drum lining does not have any cracks. Once we've done that, we can lower the hood. We'll make sure the hood is secured on both sides. And then we'll walk back to the other side of the bus and check the front tire. Now there's an acronym that will help you with this called ICD. The I stands for inflation, or you can actually kick it or hit it. And we can also use an approved tire gauge to make sure that we check the pressure on the tire. The C and ICD is for the condition of the sidewall. We want to make sure that we don't have any cuts, any bruising, don't have any dry rot, that it's in good condition. The D stands for depth of the tire. We want to make sure we have at least 430 seconds in depth on the front tire. Checking the center of the tire, we have our rim. We want to make sure 
It's not cracked or damaged. We also have our lug nuts. We want to make sure that they are tight and there's no rust. We have our hub oil seal. We want to make sure there's no leaks there. And then we also have our brake drum. We want to make sure it is not cracked or damaged. And if we had splash guards, some people call them mud flaps, they would be right here and we would make sure that they are intact and in good condition. Looking down the side of the bus, we will check three areas here. We'll start with our battery area. We want to open up the compartment. We want to check to make sure we do have batteries, and we do. Also want to check for corrosion and for any lack of connection. So connection, corrosion, and that we have batteries. Also on the side of the bus, we'll check our stop sign. We want to make sure that our lenses are not cracked and damaged and that our reflector is intact and in good condition. We'll open it up and check the lenses here, make sure that there's no cracks or damages and that our reflector is in good shape. We'll check the wiring, make sure that it's not frayed or damaged as well as the cable. And then we also have our boot, just like the one we had up front with the crossing arm. This one's larger. We want to make sure there's no cracks or damages in it. We'll check the side of our bus for reflectors. We want to make sure that the reflector tape is around the emergency exits and that it is also displayed down the side of the bus and that it is also at the bottom of the bus with these three circular reflectors that you see at the bottom. Now we'll check under the bus. There's an acronym to help us do this. It's called FEDS. That's F-E-D-S. So we're under. The, the F stands for frame. We want to check for any cracks or damages there. The E stands for our exhaust. We want to make sure that our canisters and also our pipe going to the bumper does not have any leaks. We'll check our drive shaft to make sure that we have connection. And then we also have the safety loops. We want to make sure that they are attached and in good shape. All right, we'll check our brake system underneath the bus. We have our brake chamber. We want to make sure there's no cracks in that. We have our brake line. We want to make sure there's no leaks. We also have our slack adjuster and our push rod. We want to make sure that the slack adjuster has no more than one inch of slack in it and it is attached appropriately to the push rod. We also have on the inside of that wheel our brake drum lining. We can look in there and make sure that it is not cracked. Additionally, on this side, we can check our spacing and our duals to make sure that we have plenty of spacing there and there's nothing rubbing that could cause a fire. We also can start checking our suspension under here. This is our spring. I want to check for cracks and damages there. We have our U-bolts. You can see that they are attached right there to the spring. Make sure they're tight. We have our mount. I want to make sure that it is also attached tightly and securely. Okay, we're behind the rear tire and we're continuing to check our suspension system. We have our spring on the rear. We want to make sure that it is not cracked or damaged. Our U-bolts, you can see them right through the gap there. You want to make sure they're nice and tight on that spring. We also have our mount. We want to make sure that that is tight. And then also our shock absorber. We want to check that top and bottom to make sure that that is tight on the top and the bottom right over there want to make sure that that is also attached top and bottom. Okay, lastly, we want to check our airbag. We want to check the top part of it and the bottom part of it. We want to make sure that there is no dry rot and that we don't see any bulging in our airbag. All right, we're back out from under the bus. We're standing next to the rear tire and we'll check this a lot like we checked the front tire a minute ago. We are required to check the front and the rear tire. On our rear tire, we're going to check our ICD. The I stands for inflation. We can hit it. We can kick it. We're checking for bounce. Also, we'll check with an approved tire gauge to make sure the pressure is good in our tire. The C stands for the condition. We want to make sure that our sidewall does not have bubbles or rot or any sort of cracks and damage to it. And then finally, the D and ICD is for our depth. We want to make sure that we have at least two thirty seconds in tread depth on the back tire. We then look at the center. We want to check our rim to make sure that there are no cracks or damages in that. We're going to check our brake drum to make sure that there's no cracks or damages in that. We're also going to check our axle seal. Now that's different from what we said up front. 
That was a hub oil seal. This is our axle seal. We would check it for leaks. And then we also would check our lug nuts to make sure that there's no rust and then also there's no separation or gaps on those. We also, if we had them, would check our splash guard to make sure that if we had one, it is attached appropriately and in good condition. As we get up and move back towards the back of the bus, we would point out this stop sign, but we would just say we would check it the same way that we checked that stop sign that was up front. All right, we're at the back of the bus. We would check all of our lenses, our reflectors, and our seals for any cracks or damages. We'd move forward and open up our back door to make sure that it locks into place. And it does. We would check the seals around the windows and also around the door itself. We would check down the aisle to make sure there's no trip hazards and also underneath the seats to make sure there's nothing that's been left behind. We would then close the door, make sure it does close properly. And we would also check our exhaust here to make sure that it is either even or extended from the back bumper. All right, with the side of the bus, and when we're here, we'll ask the inspector, do you want us to check this side the same way we check the other side or just the differences? Hopefully he'll say the differences because that will mean that we did a good job on the other side. We do want to mention our fuel area because that would be different on this side. We want to make sure that cap is tight. We want to make sure that the door will close back properly. And also we check under to make sure that there's no leaks from our fuel cage. We go to our storage area and we would Open that up, make sure this is where our chalks would normally be. We have our cleaning supplies and we also have our emergency triangles in the storage area. As we walk towards the front, we would wanna make mention of the no trespassing sign. Wanna make sure that, that is legible and intact. And also we have our stairwell external light. Wanna make sure there's no cracks or damages there. And when we point out our depth area, it's always going to be locked, but we would want to look under to see if there's any leaks coming from that. Once we do that, we will check our door to make sure our door does seal properly, and it looks like it does. Also check any cracks or damages in our glass and make sure that we have full range of motion when we open it up. Inside, we pull on our handrail, make sure that's tight. Also, our internal stairwell light, wanna make sure it's not cracked or damaged. And we check our stairs for any trip hazards. All right, once we're inside of the bus, we wanna stay at the top of the stairwell and we wanna check to make sure that our body fluid cleanup kit is present, as is our first aid kit, and also our seatbelt cutter. And then also our fire extinguisher, we want to make sure that that's in the green area, which means that it's charged. And also we'll recall that we saw our emergency triangles out in the storage unit. That is five items that we have to list for our safety gear, also called the circle of life. Now we'll take our key and we'll put it in the ignition and turn the key to the on position. We just want to make sure that the glow plugs warm up while we're waiting for them to do that. We will check our seat belt to make sure that that will snap into place and then it is tight. Go ahead and release that. Then we'll check the three things that everybody forgets. Number one, the steering wheel. Want to check for no more than two inches of slack in the wheel. We also want to honk our horn, make sure it works. And we also want to turn on our windshield wipers to make sure they are functional. Very good. Now we can crank up the bus. We want to make sure it's in neutral. The parking brake has been pulled. We'll crank it up like that. And then we will also turn on our strobe light and also our driver dome lights. We want to be able to see our dome lights, driver dome, and the student lights to make sure they are all working. I don't see any cracks or damage in the lenses on those lights. We'd also ask the inspector, Mr. Inspector, do you want us to check all of the exits on the bus or just one of a kind? He will say one of a kind and we'll start walking. And as we do, we're gonna pull on the seats to make sure they are nice and tight and stable. We'll open up our first emergency exits, our window. We wanna make sure we open it enough to know that someone could actually fit through there and also that the alarm did come on. We'll keep pulling on our seats as we go back. Make sure that they are in good condition. And then we will check our roof hatch. 
We want to just turn this handle enough to hear the noise of the alarm, just like that. See that? Put it back, and we'll use our finger holes right here to actually push it up like that. And then we want to be able to tell the inspector that we see our strobe light. And I do see it blinking up there. I'm not sure how good that's coming across on the video, but it is blinking. So we have a strobe light that works. Now, we'll continue to pull on the seats and we get to our back door and we will just make sure the alarm comes on and that the door does open. Now on the way back, we wanna pull on the bottom of our seats to make sure that those also are stable and in good shape, not falling apart. And we will do that until the inspector tells us to stop. But during a pre-trip, we would check every single one. Now, we'll come up here to where we sit. We'll go ahead and push this button from emergency down to normal. That will allow our door to close. And then we'll have a seat. Okay, I am now seated behind the wheel and I have made sure that my seat belt is on. I would go over to these buttons that I just turned on, like the strobe light, turn that off, and the driver dome lights as well. At this point, I would wanna check every single button that controls a fan to make sure my fans are working. And we'd also check our climate controls. We could just point them out that we would use those when we want to configure our temperature system. So let's turn on our midship heater, our driver heater and defrost, and our fan, which is right there. And then also our air conditioning. Wanna make sure all of that is turned on. And once it is, again, we check our climate controls to make sure that we've got our climate the way we want it. And then we just turn everything off, okay? Just like that. And we turn the air down a little bit so you can hear me better. Then we're gonna move to our gauges. Our first gauge is our depth gauge. We wanna make sure we have at least a quarter of a tank on our depth. We wanna make sure our water temperature is rising. Our oil pressure is rising going to move over to our battery voltage want to make sure it's at least at 14 and then we also have our air tanks right here want to make sure both of those tanks are at 120 that would signify that we have plenty of air in our air tanks they would be at a full level we also will check our indicator lights which are right here in the middle try to put the phone down where you can see them our left turn signal our right turn signal and also our hazards to make sure that they are working. Once we've done that, we are ready to do our air brakes. We always wanna make sure that our gauges are at 120 and also our door is closed before we start our air brakes. They are, so now we'll get started. First thing we wanna do is turn the key off. We're gonna turn the key back on. And then we're gonna push in our parking brake. We do that by pushing hard on the service brake so that that will indeed go in. And it did. The chalk will catch the bus. We were rolling just for a half second there, but it has caught that. We're gonna check our gauges here to make sure, and it's our air tank gauges, that we have no more than a two PSI drop in one minute. The inspector's gonna say it's been a minute, and then we're gonna push down on our service brake and hold it and then we're gonna make sure that we have no more than a three PSI drop in one minute. He's gonna say it's been a minute. Then I'm gonna take my foot and start pumping down the service brake, which is making the air escape from our tanks at 60 to 65 PSI. We have our warnings and between 20 and 45 PSI, our emergency brake just popped out right there. Okay, we can stop pumping and then we need to check to make sure that the emergency brake actually works. How do we do that? We're gonna pull against it by cranking up the bus and we're gonna put it in gear and then we're gonna give it a little bit of fuel to see if the bus holds and it does. So that means our emergency brake does work. We're gonna put it in neutral, take our foot off the service brake. We're gonna invite the inspector to step outside and once he is outside, he will check our lights. So let's pretend like he is headed out. He has left the bus. He's standing right out front there. And then we would check our headlights, which are right here in this middle position. Turn those all the way down, or all the way on rather. And he'll say they look good. Then we'll pull on this arm to make sure that our brights are on. He'll say they look good. We turn our brights off. Then we turn on our left turn signal our right turn signal 
and then of course we're going to check our hazards and then we'll go over here and check our ambers that's our yellows that come on when we're picking up kids you can see they are on now he says they look good and then we put this switch here up to warning lights and then that will make our reds come out you can see that they're out outside now outside the bus all right he's going to say they look great we close the door to get the reds to go off the inspector would then walk to the back of the bus we'll be able to see him in our side or our flat mirror when he is turned around looking at us we'll start the whole light process again we'll do our left turn signal we'll do our right turn signal we'll check our hazards and all the while he's giving us a signal saying that everything is working properly uh, we will go back over to our ambers make sure they are on we'll make sure that our reds are on okay and they are on as well and then we'll turn them off now because he's at the back of the bus we'll push on our brake and he should be able to see our brake light back there and then we'd also put it in reverse so that he can check our backup lights we'll put it back in neutral take our foot off the service brake and then we would open up our door for the inspector when he comes back in when he comes in we want to tell him that we're checking our gauges here our air tank gauges and when it gets up to 120 we will then check our parking brake that would be the next step in our air brakes check now i just heard the spillover that means we are at 120 so now this has become a parking brake it was a parking brake when we lost all the air it became an emergency brake and now that we have air back in the tanks, it's now a parking brake again. So I want to see if it works. Put my foot on the service brake, put it in drive. I'm going to try to pull against it, give it some fuel. All right, the bus is holding, it's not moving, so that means that parking brake does work. Now, I'm going to leave it in drive because I am chalked on the back side of the wheel and I want to move the bus forward to check my brake pedal, which is also called my service brake. So I'm going to push in the service brake. I'm going to release that parking brake. I am in drive. So now I'm going to move forward. And I normally have two hands on the wheel at 10 and 2, but I am holding the phone here to video this. So the first time I stopped there, I was checking to make sure that the service brake actually worked, and it did. Now I'm going to give it a little bit more fuel, go a few feet, and stop harder like that. And I'm checking to see if I had any tug or any pull in the wheel, and I did not. So with that said, I'll put it back in neutral. I will pull the parking brake. I'll take my foot off the service brake, and I will tell the inspector that that concludes my air brake check.